Okay, today I am going to do a butt weld. I have my material prepped already. I cleaned all the mill scale off and I ground a slight chamfer in the corner. That way, when I butt these two pieces together and make this butt joint, it's gonna make a little channel for me to put my weld into. That will not only get the root deeper, but when the weld is built up, it won't be sticking out as high. It'll be a little deeper. That way it won't stick out as high and I won't have as much to grind off and clean up when the weld is done. So the first thing I need to do is put a tack on each side of these two so it doesn't move. So I'm gonna weld it like that. That is a butt weld. The first thing I always want to do really is set up my materials correctly. This weld table is just a piece of flat quarter inch stock steel. Um, a lot of weld tables have holes in them. The reason you see the holes in the tables is for setting up certain fixtures or clamping devices to where you can use any part of the table and set up a nice flat secure square welding setup on this table i don't have that so i'm going to end up hanging off the edge because i still want to clamp my pieces solid because once the heat gets to these and there's it's only eighth inch material this right here so once I weld this seam, it could really, it could really pull the metals up towards the weld. Anytime you weld something, if I put a weld here, it's gonna pull the metal toward the weld. So these will bow up like this if I don't secure them in place. Now, if I just go and put these straight down, I could probably weld them, but there are some pieces of weld on this table, some spatter and stuff from previous welding. So if I put the, these plates on here, it's really not that flat because there's little, see there? There's, there's little pieces of weld on the table from the weld before spattering around. So. The first thing I want to do is clean the table to make sure I have a nice flat setup. So I'm going to use the angle grinder with the flap disc on it to just sand this surface smooth. Always wear your safety glasses and something like this. If you have ventilation, you need to use it. I have this ventilation here because when you're sanding and stuff, it does get pretty dusty. So this is the welding ventilation to, to suck up the smoke from the weld burn, but I'm gonna use it for some dust too for this. Okay, nice and smooth. Now my setup will be nice and flat when I go to weld it. So 
I want to clamp this down in a position where it's ready to weld so it doesn't warp. So I got a couple clamps here, vice grip clamps. Um, I could easily, it'd be much easier for me to just clamp this like that, one on this side and one on this side. But really this is not the best way to be welding like either away or towards yourself. It's not a good practice. You wanna either go left to right or right to left with both hands, left, to, left hand, right to left, and left to right. Right hand, left to right, and right to left, right? And this way, isn't that great to do? Cause it's not that common there might be certain times where you have to weld this way in a flat position. This is the flat position. But you will come across more of this in a vertical position. This way where you have to weld up or down. And then this is the horizontal position where your, your stick is raised up and you're going left to right or right to left. So vertical horizontal, flat. When the welding rod is pointing down, it's always in the flat position. When the welding rod is, is up like this, you're either going horizontal or vertical. And then there is the overhead position where you're pointing the rod up. So anyway, this position, not that common. I could actually turn myself and weld this way. But, so the camera can see it well, I wanna make sure you have a good view here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position it this way and I'm gonna leave a small gap between there too. I'm not gonna butt it right up against it, although I could. But I'm gonna leave a small gap so I can see the penetration I'm getting and you want to you really want a consistent gap in there so the first thing I'm gonna do is clamp the back one down now that I have the first one clamped and the reason why I put the clamp on this side is because when I take my welding rod I am going to go from left to right so when you're going in this direction, you want to have a, what's called a drag angle of about 20 degrees. Okay, so if I come in here with the welding rod at about 20 degrees, I'll clear the clamp, no problem. Had I put this back clamp on the, on the opposite side, I'd have the problem of running into it with my drag angle on this side. I could easily have changed the angle and changed the direction, but for this, here I'm gonna go left to right. I have a couple little pieces of 332nd filler wire and it's gonna help me keep keep it consistent all the way through. One to space it evenly all the way across. And then I'm gonna clamp it. Now, when I go to weld this, I will be free from the clamps and I'll still have it nice and flat and secured in place with a small gap in between for the filler metal to fill in that gap. Okay, I have my ground cable on the table. Eighth inch electrode, 6013. We'll go 85 amps. 85 amps DCEP. First things first, I gotta tack it on each side.
I'm cleaned up, I can run the bead. I'm just going to run straight along. No weaves, no nothing. Just a straight, smooth line. Make a nice bead. That's this 6013 right here. Got a nice little bit of slag peel. Peels right off. that cool off for a little bit just so because if I there's so much heat right there into that right now if I were to unclamp this right now the heat would just pull it right in so I'm gonna give it about five minutes and let it cool off and then um, we'll see what it looks like all right now that we let the heat dissipate a little bit unclamp it and do yourself a favor don't grab the hot metal with welding gloves it will damage the welding gloves and it will potentially reach through and get to your hand use pliers small pieces needle nose a pair of channel locks something that you don't have to grab it with your gloves or you know a pair of tongs the things that are meant for hot metal so let's take this off of here and see how it looks. All right. Still pretty flat. Clamping it down like that helped enormously with the heat pulling that metal. So let's take a look here. If you look at this profile now, you can see how almost even the weld bead is and it's not sticking up so much. That's gonna really save us a lot of work when we go to clean this weld up. And let's look at the penetration we got from the back. bad almost all the way through down here a little less on this side but I think that's pretty decent penetration um, if you needed to of course you could always weld on this side too there it is now we're just gonna clean this up so I think this is low enough <clears throat> that I can just use the flap wheel the flap disc and try to get it down flush to the surface
mostly flesh. There's a little bit. So it's good to have a good eye to notice this stuff before you actually come to the grind. But I can go back now and um, fill in these voids where there's no metal. So I filled in a little bit of those voids. Um, and you can see now how much more work this is going to be for me to grind that down that weld because now it was right on top, right? We didn't have a channel for it to sit in. So I'm going to grind that off now. not bad it's a it's a pretty solid piece and now this is two pieces joined together that now looks like it's pretty much one so and of course when you have welds like this you don't always have to grind them off the grind is basically for aesthetic look if you're making furniture or pieces that you don't want to see then you come over this, grind, sand the whole thing down and put a cover of paint over it and you'll never notice that it was even two pieces of metal.